Let's talk about the importance of restoring full knee flexion range of motion after ACL reconstruction. I find this so often that I have patients coming in six months, 12 months, 18 months, or even years after ACL reconstruction that don't have full knee flexion range of motion. It is essential to restore this. This is something that's gradually lost over time. So if we don't restore it fully, we're setting up the person for a lot of problems in the future. Number one, there's actually research that shows uh, you have a twofold increase of gr uh, graft failure or rupture, re-rupture, if you don't get full knee flexion range of motion back. And what is that defined as? within five degrees of the other side. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure we can fully measure equal knee flexion range of motion adequately better than the hands and knees rocking position where we're sitting back on the heels, where you want to get those ischial tuberosities all the way to the heels equally without a weight shift, without pain, without a, a tension in there. That needs to be our goal. We shouldn't be discharging anyone who doesn't get to that goal. So it's so important if we don't restore full, uh, uh, knee range of motion, whether that's full hyperextension equal to the contralateral knee or full flexion, we're setting up the person for decreased strength and, and future problems. I had an ACL reconstruction over 25 years ago, and it did take some time to get that knee flexion range of motion back. And I have to continually work on it to maintain it. It always wants to kind of creep, uh, creep out to the, that I start to lose that. So it's really important. So how do we do it? And when do we do it? I prefer that hands and knees rocking position. Certainly, you're going to do all your heel slides and, and uh, towel slides and things like that. And you can actually have them in long sitting doing overpressure that way. But when we're talking about that last bit and, uh, and even actually earlier than that, I love that hands and knees rocking position. What we're going to do is we're just going to have them gently rock, not even to any resistance, just gradually each day trying to go farther without any pain, without resistance, continuing to work on that. So the big question is, and this is a question I debate with myself all the time, so I want to hear from you. When can we start that hands and knees rocking position? With a hamstring graph, it's pretty obvious. Uh, we can start that whenever we want because we're not worried about that harvest site, you know, where the, the patellar tendon and uh, patella and, and tibia, you know, have essentially a fracture there. So a uh, hamstring graft, I'm doing that hands and knees rocking position early within the first couple of weeks, really, once that incision is healed well. And then uh, for bone patellar tendon bone, I wait a little bit longer. I wait at least till usually about six weeks, make sure that knee's really nice and padded up there. Uh, maybe in that six to eight week time frame, depending on how the person's doing. So what I want to hear from you, and I really want to hear the community's opinion on this, is when do you start or when do you feel it's safe to start that hands and knees rocking position? Uh, I, I say that six to eight week time frame. Do you say, no way, I go a lot earlier? Or do you say, nope, I do a lot later? Or no, I don't do it at all. And here's why. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. I want to hear this discussion. Uh, but the key thing is, key message of this is get that full knee flexion range of motion back after ACL reconstruction.